Hello and welcome back to all of my regular viewers and welcome to any new subscribers who may have been lured in uh, by the Freedom, which is the tank that I'm going to be reviewing today. So, as always, apologies that it's been a bit of a while since my last review. Um, life just tends to get in the way, I guess, and this isn't a full-time job for me. It's very much something that I do in my spare time, as and when I've had some particularly good games or got some interest in new tanks. Um, and it just so happens that I do have an interesting new tank now. So the T26E4 Freedom is definitely not a new premium in the game. Um, it's based on the T26E4 Super Purging, which is probably one of the oldest premiums about, actually. Um, and I had my eye on it for a while, because I did really like the Tech Tree Purging, the M26 Purging, when I got to it. And I thought, hmm. You know, something with a little bit stronger frontal armor on it that will make me a few extra credits. I could, I could get to like that quite a bit. And I was really put off by the paint job on this American one, so I wanted the unskinned version. And it just never seemed to come up on any deals. I was waiting for a fifty percent off. Um, and I got lured in on the American Independence Day celebrations where they had a massive bundle. And I owned every other tank in it apart from this one, and it meant that I got it at a 70% discount. And at that point, I couldn't resist. I just thought, I'm not going to get a better deal than this. And so I dove straight in. Um, and I must admit, I don't regret it at all. I really do like this tank. Um, and I'm even getting used to the paint job a little bit. So before I get into a little bit of the history of this tank and some games, like I always do, I thought I'd just jump back to the recent anniversary and the hero chest that I got from that. Was it worth all of that effort? Yeah, 575 gold. It could be worse, I suppose, better than the base drop. But do let me know if any of you guys uh, scored better in your anniversary bundle. Um, and as always, I think thanks out to Wargaming for that. I think it's a nice little thing to add in. It's not too difficult for people to unlock. It's just a nice little thing to keep all playing, really. So... Back to the Freedom then, the T26E4. So this was um, a derivative of the standard Pershing, and as you might be aware, the Pershing came in quite late at the end of World War II. It was a much needed replacement for the uh, M4 Sherman tank, which was just massively outclassed by the end of the war, by things like the German Panther, and particularly the heavier Tigers as well. Um, and so the normal Pershing, it did get an up, up armed. Well, it was up armed over the Sherman. It had a 90 mm gun, and if I'm correct, it was the M3 90 mm gun, which is the gun that you get on the uh, the Hellcat. So the Pershing was good. Pershing was more than a match for some of the, especially things like the Panzer IVs that it was running about against. But there was a lot of worry that it was still technically only a medium tank, and when it came up against things like the Tiger II, it was still at a disadvantage. And so, very late in the war, the Americans started thinking, can we up armour it a bit, give it a better gun, give it some more armour? And this was really where the um, T26E4 Super Pershing comes into play. Because not only has it got all of that applique armour bolted onto the front, but it's also got the T15 E1 gun on it. Um, now, this gun apparently had a muzzle velocity of 3,750 feet per second. That's 1,140 meters per second. Get this, good enough to penetrate a, a Panther's frontal armor up to 2,600 yards away. But even better, I could put a shell straight through a Yag Panther 4 and straight out the back of the other side of it. So that's the kind of power on this gun we're talking about. Now, unfortunately, in the game itself, we don't seem to have got this. I, I, I hate this gun. It is god-awful. It is the worst thing about this tank. Um, and actually, the Tech Tree Purging gets the better gun. It gets the T15E2, which is a Tier 9 gun, if I'm not mistaken. And it is superior to this in every single way, even though the Purging never got that gun in real life at all. But that's just what we have, and we'll work with it. So the M T26E4 was 
promising enough that they ordered a thousand of them to start with, although the war ended and they only ended up with 25. I think some of these might have made it across to the continent in Europe, I'm not 100% on that. Um, but you can see from the photo here, it was very much a real thing. Unfortunately, it didn't get the really snazzy paint job in real life. But yeah, still an impressive looking tank. So let's dive into some of the stats and have a look. So first things first, and you're going to have to get used to this, the engine is not anywhere near as good as the fully upgraded Tech 3 Pershing. You only get 500 horsepower out of this thing, and it gives you a pretty terrible power to weight ratio. So you are slow. Um, the slowest medium in the game that I could think of. And there we have it, that 90mm T15E1 gun that I was talking about. It's, the accuracy is on paper not that bad. 0.38, I find it lets you down. It really lets you down a lot. Um, your reload time is not too bad, 8.19 seconds, and you've got a pretty good elevation depression. You can't really complain at 10 degrees depression. But your penetration is pretty lacking, 165, and you will need to rely on premium ammo, and that is that compared with its accuracy, I think, are the drawbacks for me. You have 32 degrees uh, tra track rotation here, you've got 38 on the tech tree purging. Um, in terms of your turret, you've got 24 degrees of rotation speed, you get 38 on the turret as well on the premium purging. So that is actually quite a significant downsize. Um, your signal range is pretty good too. Uh, as for your ammo, mostly pretty handily hidden away at the bottom of the tank. I, I don't find I get ammo rack that much in it. Um, although if you want to ammo rack one, if you go for the left hand side just below the turret, that's the best place to aim. Um, most of your crew are in the turret, um, with your drivers down below. I've not found you suffer too much from crew injuries on this. Um, and in terms of armour, underneath all of that applique stuff, it is exactly the same armour layout as your standard Pershing. So it's very weak on the back, weak on the top, and it's okay on the sides. But what you will find when we get through to it, is that you get 38 mils of armour bolted on on the front and that's in addition to what you would normally have underneath on the front of the hull so it just counts as spaced armour which is very good against HE and you've even got some super tough bits on the cheeks of that peak armour there as well at 76 millimetres And then, there you have it, underneath you've got your standard 76 mils of side armour. So remember you've got to add these two together to get the total thickness. And it gets even better because bits of the armour underneath are 86 mils. You've got the main front bit of that applique armour is 88. And on the front anyway you've got 100 mil of armour. So you've got bits around the turret there and around the front that are getting into probably nearly 140 on the front there, um, 180 on the turret there, probably even more actually around that gun mantlet bit, and again the gunnery port, as the gunner's port on the front of the hull is very strongly armoured as well. So frontally this thing is a nightmare to crack, and if you can get it into a good defensive position, a good corner, and you've got support so they can't thank you, you can take on anybody. You can take on multiple tanks, I've found, and higher tiers as well. I'm still off against tier 9s in this, which you'll see in one of the replays. Um, and it's just really hard for them to penetrate you. So in terms of equipment, i um, gone for a toolbox. I find people will track you. And I've gone for vertical stabilisers um, and uh, a gun rammer, just to try and improve those gun stats, because I think the gun is the weakest feature on this tank. But that's enough theory crafting, and let's jump into some gameplays. So, I have to apologise straight off the mark on this. Um, as often is the case, I don't always record from scratch, and so when you do have a good game, you have to often rely on either the two minutes that you can capture from the, the, the console record feature, or to actually go into the replays. And the trouble with the replays, I find, um, is whilst the graphics are pretty good on them, they don't capture the gunfire ring very well. So for the first part of this 
uh, video, you're not going to be able to see very well exactly where I'm aiming, and you're just going to have to trust me that I wasn't just magically firing and hitting things, I was actually aiming for, for spots. Um, but this map also brings up an interesting question, because it, so it's northwest, and I'm bottom tier. Um, I'm a pretty slow tank. I didn't want to rush off ahead, because... I just can't risk getting flanked, so I thought the best thing for me to do, because this is a defensive tank, is probably to find a nice little ridge near the base and just kind of go into overwatch mode, give supporting fire to people on my team, or at least until I knew my team pushed far enough ahead that I could go to catch up with them. Um, and as it turned out, that was the right thing to do. But it did mean that I got a lot of... well. I got one very annoyed person on the enemy team spamming me saying that I was uh, a foolish noob and I was camping and should get out and do something. And I think it raises an interesting point because there are a lot of people in this game who maybe don't think of it very tactically when they start the map. And so they will either camp or they'll rush off to their favourite sniping spot wherever that might be on the map, regardless of paying any attention to what the situation is around them. And I think that is the key thing. There's nothing wrong with camping, per se, if you've read the map and come to the conclusion that that is the best thing in that situation. But you shouldn't do it every single game, and that's where it falls down, I think. So as you can see here, I'm in quite a good position to actually support my team and get some shots in. And whilst they can spot me, because I can pull back over the ridge, my turret armour can bounce most of whatever they're firing at me. So yeah, as before, I do apologise about that bounciness that you get from watching the replay, but it's the only way I can get you this footage. But again, the gun is its not the most accurate, so this tank isn't really designed to be a sniper. Um, which is exactly what I'm trying to do over here, but hey, it was the best I could do in the situation. But, I mean, that talk about tactical reading of the map, I'd be quite interested to hear what you all think as viewers. Um, if you had any particularly bad situations with teams just being completely unable to read the map and losing battles that you thought were going to be a definite win, or if you had any amazing success stories where um, you thought it was going horribly wrong and you found somebody on your team who's actually been really good and worked really well with you and you pulled uh, victory from the jaws of defeat, let me know what you think. So things are starting to go not so well here. Um, all of our assault force that was heading up towards their base along the H line have been repelled. Um, and now, as you can see, I've not particularly been able to do that much myself either. But I am still in the fight, which is pretty good considering I was bottom tier. I've been able to get a few supporting hits in. But I promise you, it may not look like much, but this game does really get going and it gets pretty tense towards the end. Quite lucky so far that artillery hasn't decided to really take much of a shot at me. Because if he had focused a bit more on me, it might be because of where he is. I never actually get to see where the enemy artillery is on this map, from what I remember. I think my team gets rid of them. I mean, this is kind of the situation you want to be a little bit wary of when you can see fast tanks approaching you. Because all of my team are now backed up against that far line along the uh, one line. So it's, it's quite easy for the enemy to circle if they wanted to. 
But I don't think this guy seems to be paying much attention to me. And I get a nice hit on him as he comes across. Unfortunately, can't get another one on to finish it up. At this point, I thought, right, our team is, is dropping. It's getting too close. So I need to keep RT in the fight. So I'm going to go and try and help. And then, stupidly, got distracted by these guys. And this was the wrong decision. Um, and we lose one of our artillery pieces because of it. Uh, so, dear artillery player, if you're watching, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Um, and I did realise the error of my ways and decided to come back. Um, which, for one of the artillery players, was just in time. But unfortunately not for the other one. So that one sitting in the H line, unfortunately, goes down pretty soon. But yeah, we're on a bit of a losing streak here numbers wise and unfortunately it gets worse before it gets better so I'm just thinking that light's got to be around here somewhere, he can't have gone far and sure enough, pick him up um, and I think I do get a nice one into him, or, or no I don't actually, and this is where this gun starts trolling me again and this gun does that a lot um, I'd, and I might not look like they were very well lined up there because of the replay but I assure you they were pretty well aimed shots and I was pretty confident they should go in well, they didn't. Um, but what you can see there with those bounces is the trade-off you get. You get the ball gun, but you get the good armour. Um, and if I can keep my front to any enemy on this, no matter what tier they are, they're going to have a very tough time going through. So I realise, right, got to stop this little assault that's coming up along the K-line. Let's move in. I've still got all of my hit points left. See if I can try and use these to keep those enemies in check there, because the further I can keep them away, the more shots my artillery can keep going at them. So, let's see if my theory works in practice. Let's see what the freedom can do. There we are, I'm asking for some cover. The enemy's seen me. I think he's slightly terrified by this blue and white stripes bearing down on him. And this is where the freedom comes into its own. If you can get a corner where the enemy's only got the front of your tank, and you're close enough that your gun's terrible accuracy doesn't matter anymore, you can do a world of damage. Let's get another one in there holding him in place. As you can see, the reload time on it's not too bad. I was trying to lure him in. I wanted him to fire one up. I figure it's worth a shot. Take out the Polish tank. Pull back for that reload. I was hoping he would come around the corner, but I'm going to have to go in after him. Take him down too. Now, I was feeling pretty smug with myself at this point. Until, if you remember that light tank that I didn't manage to kill before, he comes back. Revenge of the Light Tank. And I screw up again in terms of doing my job protecting Artie and getting tempted off. Um, I also screw up by, I think, getting a bit overconfident here and thinking, you know, I've still got most of my hit points left, most of my armour, let's go out and do a little bit of scouting. And I didn't expect the other T30 tank to be so close. I was sure he was back along the H line somewhere. And I run straight down here, right into his line of sight. There we go. And I pay for it quite dearly. There we go. I can't remember what calibre gun the T-30's got on it, but it's certainly big enough to go right through the front of this. I think the T-30 will go right through the front of most things, to be honest. I think we're at this point, right, try and get a bit of angling on and back off, realising my mistake. I'm also a little bit cautious, because I know that light tank is about here somewhere as well. There he is, barrelling straight down on Artie. And what I should have done now is just gone straight for him, but I was really conscious about staying out in the open and not having that rock between me and the T-30. So I tried to go around here, but then I didn't quite anticipate how fast the light tank was going. And so I have to do a bit of a slow manoeuvre backwards to get around, and this tank is slow. I should have just gone straight up to Arty to begin with. Uh, and unfortunately we lose one of our Arty players because of that mistake, so my apologies. I do manage to get a lucky shot on his turret here. I think it panics him a little bit because he... I don't know if he can get through to the arty from there or whether he was a little bit worried about being shotgun, but whatever it is, he decides to come back out again 
Um, and that gives me my, my chance. So I get another nice shot on him there. And I managed to get the reload in. Just in time. So I'm feeling pretty smug at this point. I've kept one of my RT in the game. Only one tank destroyer left. I'm hoping I can kind of keep him targeted and the RT can get a shot on him. Um, but it's not to be the case, unfortunately. The T-130 is a much more accurate player than I give him credit for, and he takes down RT in a second with a nice little shot over the ridge line there. So, this is kind of one of those situations where my freedom has advantages and disadvantages. So if you can get on a corner, your armor's pretty good. But that 10 degrees of gun depression, whilst being respectable, it's, it's respectable for a medium, it's not good enough to allow me to reach line over and get down on in here. And I don't want to give my lower plate away. Because that is a weak spot on this tank that doesn't have much of that peak armor on it. I know he will go through that, no problem. And 800 hit points, that's probably two hits from him if I miss up. Um, and because my gun's got such bad penetration, that's not a, a standing duel that I want to have with him. I, I've no guarantee that I'd win. So I want to try and catch him by surprise. And at this point, because I've been lurking over there and I've gone off target for him now. I think he thinks that I'm coming round to the right, and I decide to try my luck on the left. Now, I know he's in the cap circle, but a minute's more than enough time, even for the super purging, to get round there. And so I take my, my good time getting round there. And it does pay off, because he's not quite expecting it. I catch him looking the other way. But the gun trolls me again. <laughs> so I lose that advantage. So I'm getting a little bit frustrated at this point um, and realise that I just need to do something to reset that cap, really. So I try side scraping, and this tank can side scrape pretty well. But none of my hits are really doing anything. They're not missing per se, they're just not going through, and that's that weak penetration there. But I do get a nice one on this track there to hold him in place. Another nice one through him. No, it must have gone through the track and into the side of his tank because I get some damage off of that. No luck on that one. So it becomes just a pretty tense game of cat and mouse now. I know I've got him down to only 269, but I still don't feel confident enough to risk that going head on. Clearly neither does he either, so we're all just playing hide and seek behind the, the little outcrop. But considering I was bottom tier, and how bad the odds looked against our team before, I was pretty impressed at this point. I just kind of really want him to come over a bit, because at this point if he comes a bit forward, even with my low penetration, I could go through his lower plate, and I'm just. I thought maybe I could goad him a little bit. And these turrets, are, I'm trying to go for the cupola, would be the other thing I could do on the T30, but they're very small cupolas and they're not easy to hit, and especially with this gun's accuracy. But having said that, I do put off a good shot, and that was what it took to freak him out. I think he panicked at this point and decided to rush me. I held my shot and managed to get one. Because he was coming down the hill, it angled out his upper glacis plate and let me go straight for it. It reduced um, his effective armour. So I scored the kill and that was... Oh, I felt so chuffed after this. That was a good win. Um, so in terms of stats, it gets me my mastery badge. Um, not a bad amount of silver either. But there you go. Um, this tank is armoured as anything frontally and you can take on tiers much above you but you've got to take into account that you're slow and your gun has got crap penetration and it's not very accurate so you cannot get caught out on your own or get flanked you really are a defensive tank and if you're okay with that playstyle get this you will not regret it you will seriously not regret it so that's all from me um, this week hopefully it won't be so long 
until I get my next review out. And as always, do hit subscribe if you like the video and give me hints and tips for what you want to see me review next. Um, happy tanking all, Coffee Guy out.